Hello, everyone. Welcome to Rhythm and Rose. I'm your host, Joshua Jacob, and we have a special co-host. Serene. Hi. My girlfriend, Serene. <laughs> and we have a special guest, Charlene. Welcome, Charlene. Hey, no. thank you guys so much for having me. <laughs> yeah. I'm excited about this. It's been a while since we've been trying to get you on, but now that we have you, it's going to be a special time with you. So yes. we're going to go ahead and start with a prayer, okay? Absolutely. Heavenly Father, I come before you in the name of Jesus, Lord. I thank you, Lord, for bringing my friend Charlene on the podcast. We're about to hear her testimony, her story. And thank you, Lord, for bringing my new co-host, Serene. I pray you would bless our time together and uh, just let us be inspired in what Char has to say. Speak through Char, Lord, and I pray that you just bless our night tonight. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Absolutely. Well, it is my pleasure, my pleasure to be here, I'll tell you. Because, you know, when I met you, I just thought, wow, you know, this guy's got a lot going on. He sure <laughs> does. <laughs> yeah. He does. And then as I got to know you better, I thought, boy, we have some real similarities that, you know, life has thrown us that we weren't really counting on and right. that we weren't really prepared for, maybe. So right. it's great how God has brought us together. Amen to that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then Shari, if you want to go in and share a bit of just by yourself and, and then just the journey that God has got you through and then, and then kind of, I guess, go through yeah, your testimony. Sure. So, you know, I was born in El Paso. I, I oh, nice. never thought I would come back here. I left in the first grade and I thought, okay, I'll never go back to El Paso. Why would I? I had a great career. It took me all over and I was so blessed to live in so many great places. Mm -hmm. And then I don't know. I just decided, I think I'm going to go home. My mm -hmm. mom and dad were getting older and my career was ending. And I thought, you know what? I think I'm going to head back to El Paso. And through all that time, you know, my childhood was amazing. I have amazing Christian parents that raised me to love God, to be in church, to know right and wrong, to have those values built into me. I was mm -hmm. saved when I was nine years old. I never have known a time in my life when I didn't have God. So it was so precious. You know, I'm so blessed because right. not everyone has that. Right. So then, you know, I went through my years. I can't say I was perfect, but you know, <laughs> you know how it goes. <laughs> but I got married. I had me some boys. I have three boys, grown men now. Oh, I have okay. 13 oh. grandbabies, 13 grandbabies. Wow. Josh has to brag about them all the time. <laughs> all the time. My oldest is 19. My youngest is one. So I've got some grandbabies in there. My husband and I were married 36 years. So it was great. Wow, we had a great run. Yep. Great run. And then things changed mm -hmm. in 2016. I lost him and he took his life and oh. it was such a shock to our family. This is the family that hasn't had anything like this. Nothing. Mm -hmm. You know, we just had a normal family. We grew up good. We got married good. We raised our kids good. We mm -hmm. had grandchildren good. Everything was good. And then we took a hit. And it was so unexpected and so out of the blue that we didn't even know how to cope or how to handle it and couldn't believe it. Couldn't believe it. Wow. And the worst thing about it, I will say, is that I just couldn't process it. And that I've learned is so common. Because right. when you have something so tragic, so unexpected happen, right. you just can't process it and you need help. You need help. Yeah. So I stumbled through the first two years, just, I don't even remember them too well. You know, I don't remember who was there for the holidays. I don't remember what right. I did. I know I fed the cows a lot. I rode the horses. I did all the things that I knew to do that we had always done, mm -hmm. but um, I don't remember so about year three, though, I started realizing the testimony that was rising out of it because I started to pull out of it. I had some good support and people came for me and said, OK, this is what we're going to do. I started my church life at Abundant at that time. They oh. opened on the West Side and I joined Abundant. And I I have I have never been welcomed into a church home like I was welcomed there. Oh. So I started to recover and I know now, you know, Jesus Christ is your stand up and he's your recovery. Right. And if you try to go, you can go through these things without it, but mm -hmm. it's not so good. Mm -hmm. It doesn't go so well. Mm -hmm. So I now I I started leading a class after I attended, it. I think maybe three times, maybe four. I don't know. <laughs> so mm -hmm. many times. Finally decided I'm going to lead this class. And it's called loss of a loved one. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. Then we started a group because there were so many that came through loss of a loved one. And then it started to be after the loss. So we started a Thursday night Zoom. We Zoom every Thursday and that has a tremendous following. So many hundreds of really? hundreds of people have gone through. Yep. And then we have a group, 100 women praying that have, that's risen out of all of these where it's over a hundred. Now we started with five and wow. our dream was a hundred and now it's over a hundred. Wow, and you, over a hundred. That's awesome. You send the text. Yeah. It's like 180 actually, something like that now. And you send the text and I send it out. And you know that over a hundred women are praying for you at that moment. Wow. And so it's so awesome. powerful yeah. and so we've beautiful. seen God move so strongly through it. It's really something. So that brings me to say, you know, when you have those hits and you take those, sometimes your greatest, your greatest hurt turns out to be your greatest ministry. Wow. I believe it. I believe it with all my heart. And I've just seen God move through it. It's been something. So now um, we're putting together a recovery program. So it'll be, it'll be uh, the four parts. It's the first part of get, get yourself right with God, right? Get yourself right. right. Mm -hmm. Search your soul, do some homework, get yourself right with God. Second, you know, get your self-care in order. You can't think well, you can't function well if you don't eat well, rest well, mm -hmm. you take care of the temple, right? Right. Take care of the temple. Mm -hmm. right? And then thirdly, get your relationships right, get the right people in your life. If you've got toxic people, deal with it. You can do it in love and you can move them a little, give some distance between, between you, mm -hmm. which is healthy. Right. You got the right people surround yourself with like-minded mm -hmm. and then third, fourth, just get your business in order, mm -hmm. get your business in order. You know, a lot of things, when you lose someone, there's a lot of business things that you got to deal with, but get your finances in order, get your life insurance in order, get yourself a will, take care of things, get things set up. God is a God of order. Mm. It's a God of order. So that's it kind of in a nutshell. It's what I do. You know, my, my, my challenge in my life is to be um, equipped, to be ready so that I can encourage, so that I can support, so that I can be there for those, so that they don't have to stumble in those early years. Mm -hmm. Not on my watch. Mm -hmm. I'm watching. And if I know you and I know you've had that kind of a loss, then I'm going to step in. I'm going to try to help. You. Right, 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 right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, so that's kind of kind of what I do. Yeah. And I can definitely relate. Um, my the, the father of my children, he we lost him. He took his life in 2019. So it's, mm -hmm. you know, it was recent as well. And just like you, it's like, at first, you're just kind of going through the motions. You're not really, you know, you're just kind of getting through. Um, so I remember just being in that place of brokenness and you know, just not knowing until I finally just surrendered and, and said, you know, Lord, I, I, I can't do this without you. I need you, especially because of my kids. My son yeah. was 15 at the time. So he, um, for him, even now he's 19 now, and it's still a, a, a struggle for him, you know? Yeah. Um, and me as a mom, like there's nothing worse than, you know, seeing your children in pain and not being able to do anything. I mean, as far as prayer and, and and knowing that the Lord will, you know, make sure that he's good. Yes. But as far as the feeling of when it's happening, not being able to do anything is, is so hard, you know? And uh, it comes with such a stigma, right? It comes with such a stigma. Just saying the word, you know, my husband took his life. My husband committed suicide. Oh my goodness. People don't know what to say to you. They don't, they don't know how to handle you. They don't know. Should we say, I'm sorry for your loss? Should we say, um, why didn't you know? I had some of that, you know, how, right. how did you not know mm -hmm. the guilt that comes with it? You know, it's just such pardon my phrase, but it's a loaded gun. <laughs> it is a <laughs> loaded gun. It okay. comes just like that. Right. And you say, wow, how does this happen? And then what? Mm -hmm. And then what my sons, some of my sons weren't honest about what happened to their dad. They would tell people, oh, he died in a car wreck or okay. he, you know, he, he was sick. They didn't want to say it because somehow it reflects like that. They may do something like that. Right. Or, you know, there's so much 
And you know, they may, there's a risk factor there. So you have to watch, you have to be aware, but just saying the word, every time you say it, it's empowering. Every time you say my husband took his life, my husband committed suicide. I, I, we, our first session, we talk about it. And it's kind of like AA. you say, hi, my, my name is Char. My husband committed suicide. You know, right. you have to, you have to, you have to, you have to speak it. Yes. It has to come out of your mouth. And every time you say it, every time you say it, God is faithful, puts a little bit of stitch in there, puts right. another little stitch in there. Mm-hmm. It gets a little bit, not so much easier, but better. You mm-hmm. get better. You start to recover. Yeah. And then you hit the points, like you said, like for me, it was first getting my mind right. You know, I had to get yeah. my mind right. And then it was like, okay, Serene, you got to start eating better. You got to exercise. You got to move. You got to. And, and in that time, I remember thinking like it was literally it was me, my dog and God. And, and yeah. it, it was in my, my time. I was, I was alone physically here on earth, but I was not alone. You know, he right. was, he was showing me. Um, so you're absolutely right. It's very important that we get yeah. our temple, right? Because if it's not yeah. right, like, how am I supposed to pour into my son when I don't have anything to pour yeah. in, pour out of, you know what I mean? So I, I, I can completely relate to you. And like That's you said, for a long time, I would just say he passed away. I yeah, it's easier. Why? I wouldn't say why. Yeah. yeah. Like, I, I don't know you. I don't know what you're going to do. I don't know how you're going to react. I don't know what you're going to say. So I'm not going to share that with you unless I yeah. really feel that I, yeah. and, and a lot of people, like you said, friends that are supportive and encouraging and uplifting and are going to pray over you and pray for you and, and help you through. And in that moment in my life, I remember the Lord removing so many people from my, yeah. like never before, like yeah. that I thought were going to be in my life for the rest of my life. Oh, they're gone. Yeah. Yeah. Out of here, out of here, yeah. removing yeah. and adding, you know, just yeah. like, here you go. Here you go. Yep. And I just, I couldn't be more thankful for that, you know, and that's what happens when you stay in the presence of the Lord, when you stay with him, even when it's hard to pray, even when it's hard to praise him, even when it's hard to read your Bible, yeah. and do all of that. It's that's when you're like, you push yeah. through it. And he, as long as you're faithful, he will see you through it. You know, it is absolutely true. And you don't feel like it. You don't. So, you know, when I, I have started to say it more because the more I say it, the more people I find that have been affected by it. Then they'll say, just like you, that happened to me too, Shar. That happened to me too. Wow. And it like gives them that little ounce of courage to say, you know what? That happened to me too. I had that. Mm-hmm. And then I said, and I couldn't get out of bed. Me neither, Shar. I couldn't either. Well, what did you do? Well, I stayed in bed. <laughs> no one told me how to get out. <laughs> you know, I, in bed. I, I couldn't get out of bed. And so right. now I have what I call the get out of bed checklist. And I give it to anybody. And I don't care what your loss is. Sometimes it's a job. Sometimes it's a mom or sometimes it's a husband or a child or I don't care what the loss is. Sometimes you're moving to a new city and you've lost your community. There's loss comes your dog. I I had to get counseling for my dog. You know, I mean, it's serious. You know, you lose those dogs and they're your, they're They're your your family. Yeah. So, so serious. And So I have this get out of bed checklist and I say, you know what? I'm going to, I write this out for you. I'm writing it in my writing. I'm going to give it to you and you do this every day. And if you can't do one step, you call me because I'm going to help you for a couple of days because that's what I needed. Right. I needed someone to say, if you can't get out of bed, shark, call me. Mm -hmm. If you can't get in the shower, you call me. If you can't eat something, call me. And now I say, you eat something. I don't feel like eating. I don't care. You, you you write down what's good for you avocado. Okay. I'm going to eat avocado right now. Right. <laughs> Something good for you because you can't be trusted in your own mind. You can't. Mm. So you have to say, get up, eat something, be planful, eat something, take a walk, get in the word of God, read your Bible. I don't care. Open the Bible and read one sentence, just one. Right. One. You don't have to read a book. You don't have to read a chapter. You don't have to read the whole verse. God honors your obedience. Just read it. Read something. Yeah. And then pray, mm-hmm. ask people to pray for you mm-hmm. because you need it. 
but that's the get out of bed checklist. You know, I had a girl not long ago. She called me. She said, Char, I added something to the list. I said, what'd you add? She said, I took a walk. I was like, praise God. She took a walk. She had <laughs> she had been afraid to go out of her house. She hadn't oh, left her wow. in months. I got two of them right now. Don't go out of their house. They're afraid. They fear death. They've lost, had such a loss that they fear that something will happen to them. Mm. They don't go out of their house. It's so serious. Grief is such a big deal. Such a big deal. So you got to not run from it. It's going to find you. It's going to okay. seek you out. Yeah, it's going to seek you out for sure. Char, I want to address something. I think I asked you this at work. Did at the time when you lost your husband, did you, um, you know, question God, get angry, kind of just sure. get frustrated? Like, why? Like, we, yeah, we, it's like, what do you think? We love God. Like, you just so much right. goes through your mind. You know what I mean? Yeah. And you're like, I've why? I spent my whole life wrong? trying to yeah. be right, right? I just spent my whole life trying to be worthy, trying to be good, trying to follow the rules, trying to keep what I'd been taught, read the Bible, do what it says, be in church, be with my, you know, get my kids in church. Mm -hmm. I thought, how could this happen? How could something like this, how could you take him? And then I came up to the realization one day, you know what, Charlene, remember. And if you read the last few chapters of Job, you, you hear God answer Job in a whirlwind. And he says, Job, were you there? When I created the universe, were you there when I created the oceans and made them stop where they stopped? Were you there, Job? Well, of course he wasn't. Maybe Charlene, not. who are you? You, Charlene, who are you to question God? I do not know the mind of God. I do not know why my husband isn't right. here today. I do not know, but I do know this because you pound that stake so deeply in the ground to say, I know what I know, what I know, what I know, what I believe. Right. And I believe in this God, this Jesus Christ, this Holy Spirit, this Lord God Almighty that created it all, that did create the galaxies and all we know. And you know what? If he says that's what's going to happen, that's what's going to happen. Did he cause it? No. We live. God is only good. God is right. only good. People say, I right. don't know why God would do that. He didn't do it. We live in a sinful world. Right. We live in a sinful world. Mm -hmm. Can't blame God for that. No, people, can't forget, blame God for people forget that there's an enemy too that, you know, can only get to our mind. And they, I think they forget about that. They forget that the enemy yep. is very real yeah. and very real. They like a roaring lion. Right. And he's going to be here to steal, kill and destroy, you know, mm -hmm. so sure. they yep. forget about that. And I, I don't know. It's just, yeah, it's John 10, 10. You know, I remind myself all the time and I say, and I question myself saying, Hey, watch out. Was that thing you said, was that thing you did, was that because the saint, Satan is a worthy adversary. He's so smart. He's so bright. He knows right where we're vulnerable. He knows right where to send that little thought or that little temptation or that. He knows exactly where. And it's so easy when we lose someone, we're so sad. And of course you get angry. You go through anger. I'm not mad at God. I'm mad because Wes is gone. Of course. I am. Mm -hmm. Am I sad? Yes. People say, when am I going to stop feeling like this? Char? I don't know when you decide to. Right. That's the truth. Yeah. When you decide to, you're going to stop mm -hmm. yeah. because you're the only one that can say, they say, well, I, I just cry, cry. Some days I was Feel cleaning it. out my pantry today. I ran across something and I picked it up and I remembered a dinner and I cried and I thought, Oh, just give yourself about 15 minutes, Charlene, go ahead and cry and then stop. And finish working on the pantry. Right. And, then, and then I'll go again in a few minutes. And then I thought, oh, man, I do remember that. And I remember this and this and this about it. And I cried again. And I thought, that's all right. Give yourself 15 minutes and then and quit. And some days it doesn't happen at all. Some weeks it doesn't happen. And then some days like today, it'll happen three times. I don't know. You know, yeah. and and it's fine. It's fine. Yeah. We got to give. How sad time. would it be? Right. How sad it would be if I was married to that guy for 36 years and I didn't cry for him. Right. how sad yeah we got to give ourselves that we got to allow ourselves to feel mm -hmm. we got to feel we got to let it go we got to release it release it and then feel it and then we're good you know and we just got to know like i said pound that stake so deeply in the ground that you know whose child you are when right. everything gets bad when everything seems tough when everything seems uncertain when everything is a question mark just know whose child you are who died on the cross for you? Who loved you so much? Mm -hmm. Who will never leave you, never forsake you? Make those declarations. Walk them with strength. 
-hmm. with conviction and believe them with all your heart. And you can move right through, move right through. It doesn't go away, but it gets better. Amen. Yeah. It Thank does. you so much, Char. It does get better. Yeah. You know, I um one of the things when my mom passed away from cancer, I was wondering, of course, like you mentioned, how do we why do we question God about certain things? But um I thought there's certain people that are healed from cancer that God heals them, and then there's some that yeah. are but they both love God. So I've always questioned, well, my mom loved you with all her heart. How come she didn't get spared to be healed, but then others are? You know what I mean? Guess what, Josh? Your mom's healed. Your mom's <laughs> healed. Right, she sure is. <laughs> yeah. She's in Your a better mom. place than we are. Yeah. Your mom is healed. And if you called her up today and said, hey, you want to come back? She'd say no. <laughs> She'd say no. Not you not. Me, mom? <laughs> I love you and I'll see you soon. Yeah, she yeah, isn't, yeah. isn't going to come back for it. No. No. You know, people say that all the time. It's like, well, what? I tried to live right. My husband was good. My wife was good. My my baby was innocent. All of this, your baby's healed and your baby's in heaven. Our prayers are answered. Right. Maybe not in the way we want them. Right. Maybe we don't understand it. But right. again, our mind is not the mind of God. You can't even we were... question it. You can't qu allow yourself to question it. Once you start questioning, <laughs> then you're in trouble. Right. You're in trouble. You got to know that you know, right? Know mm -hmm. that you know without a shadow, no matter what comes, no matter what emotion because all those emotions we're talking about, those are so human, right? Yeah. yeah. They are so human. Of course. Because you think, my mom should be here. Well, everybody should be here. Right. Don't know. It's not fair. I don't like it. But I do know. I do know who I believe in with all of my heart, all of my soul. Yes. Right. Absolutely. I totally okay. agree. Yeah, yeah, me too. Yeah. And it's true in every single thing. Not just loss. But you, it's very hard to find someone who hasn't had a loss. Something. Right. Right. Somebody. Something. You can talk. As soon as I say I have a group for loss, it doesn't matter who I'm talking to. It's a topic. Josh knows. It goes on and on. Mm -hmm. Everywhere. Whenever I'm talking to someone, it just goes on and on. And they need prayers. <laughs> 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 it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> yeah. Josh knows. But you know what? God is so faithful and good. Because, man, so many people, even from work, you know, I give them that little card. They call me. They text me. They're in the group. They have made friends. It's better together. You need people around right. you. You need, community. you need to not do it alone. I did it alone for two years. I suffered. I say, no, don't do it. Mm -hmm. don't do it. Yeah, you got to have some. That's what I truly was truly inspiring about what you just said. And I admire that you do that. You are giving to others what you wish you would have had yeah. when you were going through it. And that's yeah. so powerful mm -hmm. because we have to do that. Like anything yeah. you go through, like say, for instance, you're going through a divorce. You, you know, there's so many things that you wish somebody yeah. would have done when you were going through it. So when somebody else goes through it, I get to be the person that is like, I know exactly what to do because exactly. I know exactly what I needed when go. this was happening. You know. That is exactly right. And, and that's what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to be wise and we're supposed to share. We're supposed to love one another. If you love, say, okay, my son, if I know something that's going to make things better for him, am I not going to tell him? So why wouldn't I tell anybody? Right? Right. I, I know something about this. So let me tell you what to do. Let me help you do it. Let me come and take you to do it. Let right. me come and get you out of bed. Let I me, had a lady, it was mm -hmm. the 4th of July and she was in bed. She couldn't get out of bed. And I said, all right, I had all these people come into my house. And I thought, well, I got two hours. I said, get up. I'm coming to get you. And we're going to Olive Garden. I couldn't think anywhere else to go. So I go there. <laughs> <they're out> there. <laughs> it's Olive Garden on the 4th of July. You know, <laughs> I said, well, you're in my car. So you're, you're captive. So we're just coming on over to my house. You know, but it's just it's like that. You're not going to spend the 4th of July in bed being sad. That not on my walk. Awesome. Because I know. Yeah. yeah. And that it's something my father shared with me this past week um, when I was talking to him. Um, he's always meeting people where they are. And that's yeah. what you do. You know, you meet people where they are. Like yeah. you can always tell people, come to church and read your Bible and do I'll this. pray for you. 
but yeah. you, there's no action and you going and meeting them where they are. That is so, that's like, you need yeah. that. People need to know that you care and you love. And so they need to feel that love. They need to feel that you care. So once you do that, that's it. Like, I feel, I like think it's, a, I think it's the last verse in John. It's in John, uh, 12 I think it's in 12 might be 13 I think it's 12 last verse in 12 and he says do you love these things of the world do you love them more than me mm -hmm. because my all the time I can make excuses I can say no I'm not going to go over there because I'm tired right. or I want to go shop or I want to go eat or I want to go do something else do you love these things more than me because if what would Jesus do right right he go He'd stop and he'd go take care of that need, whatever that is, mm -hmm. whatever. Maybe you want to go shop and maybe you want to do something else, but you need to go and take care of this, then go do something else. Right. Yeah. Priorities. Mm -hmm. right. So Char interesting. With your ministry from Abundant. Um, yeah. Can you share a little bit more? Like if those that are watching this, if they'd like to get any counseling, um, if they like to connect with you on that, like Absolutely. for me, me I that. need it. <laughs> it's I so great. Well, it's, very, it's very exciting because we're going to merge loss of a loved one used to just be a four week class. We're going to move it into recovery, abundant recovery starts. I believe it's the 13th. I think that's the second Tuesday of February starts on the West side campus. This, this time it'll run for 15 weeks. It's awesome. It's so great because four weeks is not enough. Four weeks, you just barely get the person out of bed, you get them moving, you get them eating, and then and then it's over. So this is 15 weeks, and we're gonna talk about those four topics. We're gonna we're gonna hit them all again, but it's on the west side. Okay. It's on the abundant app, which is free. They can go right on. You can register for the class, abundant recovery. And then um also we have after the loss, Zooms every Thursday, like I say. There's counseling there. Any of the pastors at Abundant are are available can get counseling any day. And then also, you know, we have the 100 women praying. I'm glad to give my number out for that. And you just text it. doesn't matter what the prayer is. And just know that all those women are going to be praying for you right wow, away. Wow, That's so over a hundred women just pray. And, it's something. and it started with five, Wow, five old women decided to pray together right here. We like, Hey, we should pray together. Okay. And then another one said, I, I want to join that. I want to do that. I want to do that. And I did it so primevally with groups of 20 on these texts. I do it old school. And because I don't do mass texting, I don't do it. Mm -hmm. And so I do one by one. And so groups of 20 get that prayer request and those 20, 20 pray and they get to know each other. Another group of 20, another group of 20. And as more come makes more groups of 20, it's crazy. Wow. But it just is something and the power of it, our answers and God's faithfulness mm. to answer us is something, really something. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. and when does this yeah. start? You said next Thursday, or when does it already start for the West Side? We Zoom. Um, oh, no, it starts February. Oh, 13th. 13th. Right. I okay. think that's the second Thursday, second Tuesday, second mm -hmm. Tuesday, second Tuesday of February 13th, I believe it is. Yeah, right before Valentine's Day on the West Side. Mm -hmm. Get the Abundant app. You can just Google it, Abundant app. It's a little A with a plus. And um, you can register there. And then, like I say, if you're interested, I'm glad to give my number. And we do the Thursday night Zoom. For, and those are topics. We just pick topics and we just move through them. Um, what helps you move forward? Mm -hmm. We might talk about what's your legacy. We might talk about um, what your prayer looked like. We might talk about how to build self-confidence. We might talk about all kinds of topics. Every single Thursday, we haven't missed. I don't think in four years or something. Um, so we Zoom every Thursday. Yes. Yeah. Awesome. yeah, it's really something. God is so faithful. God is working. Yes. Yeah. Isn't it? Isn't it something to celebrate? You just say, Absolutely. "Wow!" Right. Yeah, out of out of something so tragic. Mm -hmm. Something, and it's always it's. They always say the the worst that you go through, you end up you know, giving something good, something great comes out of your great ministry. That you're, yeah. And in this case, this, and it's, it's, yeah. beautiful. it's a beautiful thing. And that's how, you know, you can't tell me there isn't a God. You can't tell me that yeah. there, you can't not when this is happening, you know, so. in this day and age, truly, I've been saying this more and more, and I really mean it is if someone 
does not believe in God today, doesn't accept Jesus Christ as their Savior, doesn't believe he died on the cross for their sin, doesn't accept that as a way of salvation for eternal life, Mm -hmm. it's simply because they don't want to. Right. There's no reason. It's free. It's it's fabulous. It's glorious. It comes with no string. Yeah. So if you don't want to do it, it's because you just you just choose not to. Right. Yeah. Choose. And he's a perfect gentleman, so he's not going to barge into your life. No, he's not. He's always knocking. He's always standing. He's always waiting. And you know what? And it's very interesting um, how God sometimes even sends people in your life to share the gospel to you. You know what I mean? Yes. And he gives Absolutely. you chances that way, you know, if they say no all the time, he's going to be like, I gave you chances. Right. Time I, after I, time. I've sent people in your yeah. path. Mm-hmm. You kept saying no. And even after maybe five, 10 years or 20 years, I still said someone else when you were at your yeah. old age and you still. still said, like- yeah. Right. So people will say, helped. they'll say, you know, my husband, Pashar, I don't know. I don't think he believed in God. I'm a believer that the Holy Spirit knocks until your last breath. I can't say, did he choose? I don't know. Did he have opportunity in his life? Yes, he did. But in that last breath, if he said, I believe in Jesus Christ, son of God, as my savior, he's in heaven. Yep. He's in heaven. Absolutely. You know, so until your last breath. Mm-hmm. You remember the, uh, before we end the podcast, the thief on the cross? Yeah, but there was those two, and he and one was making mocking Jesus, yes. saying, "If you're the Son of God, why aren't you saving yourself?" And then that other thief was like, "Hey, leave him alone. We deserve to be up here." And he looks at Jesus and says, "Jesus, when you enter your kingdom, remember me." And he yep. said, "Tonight or today, you'll be with me in paradise." With me in paradise. See, just I, that I, simple I, faith of saying, "That second, I believe you are who you say you right. are." Just remember me, and he says, "You yep. will be with me." See, even yeah. something, something, he didn't have to go through this long prayer. Jesus nope. didn't say, okay, nope. well, say this first, do this first. You know, no, he says, no, today, right now, you'll be with me. That's beautiful. I've had people say to me, I've had people say, I got to get things right in my life. Then I can get right with God. No, no, no. <laughs> Don't wait. Don't tarry. Don't no, tarry. Just... Yeah. Don't tarry. Yeah. You don't wait to get right with God. You just accept him as your savior and he'll help you get right. Yeah, yeah we don't we don't know when our time's up. We, only God knows. You know, we life think is- we have we think we have all the time in the world. We think just because of our age we're at in life. Oh, you know, maybe when I'm my seven, my sixty, or my seventies, I will. No, you could die tomorrow, right? So it's always good to just- all three of us sitting here have learned that. Yes, yes, we don't have- know. You, you don't just- know. Yeah. yeah, be ready, be ready, and for goodness' sake, if you know someone who doesn't know the way who doesn't know Jesus Christ, tell them, Mm -hmm. tell them, don't be scared. Don't be timid. Don't be nervous about it. Just tell them. Maybe that's just what they need. They just need you to tell them. Or even a prayer. Just say, do you want me to pray for you? Mm -hmm. You know, they're like, what? Prayer? Yeah. Let me pray for you. Yeah. Yeah. It's amazing. It's amazing. The doors that God opens at the grocery store, so many places where I'm just doing something and then, something else comes up, you know, and mm-hmm. then you say, Oh, really? Oh, tell me what's going on. Why are you so sad or whatever? And then they just start telling you people are starving to tell you. Right. Yeah. So then you say, Oh my gosh, I got an answer for that. Let me just tell you the answer for that. Cause I have a God that can fix that. I have a God that can heal that in you. I have a God that can reassure you, bring you peace, bring you joy. Yes. You don't, you don't have to live that way. Amen. Yeah. You just got to be bold though. Yeah. You got to know you were given yeah. that gift by grace and that, your job is to share it. It's your purpose. Mm-hmm. Amen. Boldness. You said it. You said it right. Be bold. Yeah. Be bold. Yeah. Well, Why, they, not? yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? Yeah. Why not? Well, Shara, I just want to say thank you for coming on the podcast and sharing your beautiful testimony and just all the yeah. wise words for us and just everything. You just we were we were blessed by that. So thank you so much. It was my pleasure. You guys are a blessing. I'm telling you what, just you doing this, Josh. I'm so proud of you for doing it. And I thank you, I love it. I think it's just such a service. It's such a service. Just bringing information to people, just bringing it in a way that pleases God and honors him. And, you know, to say, look, there's there's help out there. There's a way, yeah. Yeah. you know, it's Jesus Christ for if sure. One, the one person on who sees this uh, podcast is touched by it. That's one that we've changed their life with. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I always say it, that one might be saved. Yep. Right. One. Yeah. 
One. Well, it definitely moved me in, in so many ways. Okay. Just, you know, how well, you come and join us. Join us. I, in I am. I am. <laughs> I'm going to be there, Charlene. <laughs> I'm telling you what, I'll make sure you know right when I'll send that information over. Yes, me. please do. Because I, yeah. I need that. I think I, uh, it's so hard, you know, it's so hard to find, you know, the right help, uh, whether it's therapy or support groups. It's just, you kind of like for me, I'm like, where do I look? What do I do? How do I do it? You know, but God is good. Amen. God is good. Here we are. And now I God. know that's right. Sure that, you know, I'm not the only one that's going to get something from this. So praise God, you know, all yeah. honor and glory to him for all of this that's transpiring so that he can move, you know, and help we get the help that we need. So thank you so much for sharing your testimony. Of course. And I Thanks for like having me. Yeah, and I feel like we could even do it together because of the loss of my mother, you know, just the fact that I'm still covering from that, you know, it's not easy. So, yeah, no, it is. And, you know, you got to, like I say, you got to deal with it. Can't You can't brush it aside. It always comes back. So just get it right. Just yep. get it right. Deal with it. Yeah. Well, it was my pleasure, guys. Yeah. Thank, thank you thank again, you. Char, for coming on. We'll see you soon. God bless yes. you. All right, everyone, this is Joshua Jacob with Rhythm and Roads, and we have Serene here as my co-host. Thank you for joining us, thank and we'll, guys. we'll catch you on the next uh, episode. And thank you again, Char, for being our special guest. You're so welcome. My pleasure. Have a good God night. bless you. Bye. God bless you.